Ne. Good afternoon. Welcome to the noon meeting of the Rotary Club of Baton Rouge. Um, before we get started, we do want to take a, a moment um, for a moment of silence for Davis Rohr, who sadly passed away yesterday from COVID. Davis was a member of our club for 33 years. Thank you. Well, welcome again. I'm Haggai Davis, the club president, and this is our virtual meeting again for uh, the Rotary Club of Baton Rouge. We'll start off with our invocation today by Dave Knight. So let us pray. We beseech thee, our Heavenly Father, to bestow thy grace upon this meeting. As we enjoy our fellowship, one with another, May we grow in faith so that we may have courage to give more to our friends in Rotary. And in turn, give strength to the ideals of Rotary in the service to mankind. Amen. And now we'll be led in the pledge by Jareth Roseman. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have our four-way test led by Ed Jeffries. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? So a few announcements before we, we get to our program. On Monday, you should have received a survey from Sherry uh, that went out asking about uh, participation. Should we be able to get back into meeting at Drusilla and you know whether or not you'd had your vaccine yet or not? I've had my first round I'm very excited about. Um, that went out. If you do have, uh, if you have not had a chance to respond to it, please take a moment to do so. We've had a pretty good turnout already a, a good response, but we do want uh, to get as many people to give us some input on that as we possibly can. Also, uh, and one more reminder, April 10th, the Mississippi River Plastic Waste Reduction Initiative. That will be where we're going to be pairing up and going out and picking up uh, plastic and trash along the waterways here in the greater Baton Rouge area. We'll have a sign up and a lot more details to come here in the very near future. Um, but again, just want to get everybody on board and ready for the April April 10th meeting that's coming up. So with that, we're going to throw this over to Greg Wood to introduce our speaker. Fellow Rotarians, today our guest speaker is Brian Kreisel. Brian is speaking to us today from just down the I-10 in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today, Brian will be speaking to us about the Bayou State Trail concept in an effort to developing a statewide trail for Louisiana. Today, Brian will point out that Louisiana is one of only three states without a trail in excess of 100 miles and the need for additional outdoor recreational opportunities for our citizens. Brian was born and raised in Lafayette and has spent the majority of his entire life there. A graduate of Acadiana High School, 
He earned his degree in business administration from the University of Louisiana in 1995. He is married to Tara and they have a stepson, Trey. They have two dogs, a golden retriever, Daisy, and an A-plot hound named Jay. It's no surprise his hobbies are, are outdoors, including hiking, barbecuing, and watching baseball. Brian has been in the advertising business for nearly 20 years, spending a decade at the Daily Advertiser and was the advertising director for the Lake Charles American Press in the late 2000s. He established his business, Media First Solutions, in 2016 and has had the opportunity to provide campaigns for multiple industries across our state. Brian's keys to success are having a consistent plan, believe in yourself, and always treat your customers the way you expect to be treated by others. Fellow Rotarians, today let's welcome Brian Chrysol. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Haggai. And thank you to all of you from Rotary Club of Baton Rouge. It's a great honor to be able to speak to you today. As a fellow Rotarian from the Rotary Club of Lafayette North, I, along with several members of my club, are very passionate about what I'm going to be discussing with you today. And also very confident that this idea that I'll be presenting will soon become a reality. So, just to go over a few statistics, as Greg mentioned uh, a second ago, Louisiana is only one of three states without a trail in excess of 100 miles. The only two states outside of Louisiana that do not have this are Mississippi and Rhode Island. And neighboring states have been benefiting from years from having hikers visiting during the cooler months that we're in right now. And on average, and this is information that we were able to generate from the Rails to Trails program that I'll be talking about in a little while. On average, any community that has a trail in excess of 50 miles that runs through the community or adjacent to the community, generally see an average of a $6 million impact on having a trail of this length. Louisiana needs additional outdoor recreational opportunities for its citizens, particularly people that are in a lower income and it provides citizens an exciting way to remain physically fit. Not everyone's able to jump in their car and drive to a trail that's an hour and a half, two hours away. So we wanna be able to have something that's more easily accessible to a lot of citizens in Louisiana. And of course, because of COVID-19, hiking has become increasingly more popular and will continue to do so over the next several years. And as I move forward, I'll be talking a lot about hiking, but this does also include people who do like to ride their bikes as well. And so there's different types of people that like to hike on trails. Some of you out there that are watching this program may fall into the category. Uh, the group that I was just talking about a little while ago are people that could have access to be able to walk a trail for, say, a couple of miles. They just want to get away from everyone get a little exercise and then turn around and go back home. Myself, I'm someone that likes to be able to go hiking for the entire day. I like to be able to go find a trail within an hour or two where I can go and spend several hours and hike up to say about 10 miles or so. Uh, this is a picture I took of myself at uh, Lake Fossey Points uh, just uh, along the Chafla Levy Trail. And there's other types of people that like to hike as well that will take it even a further level. Uh, this is an example of a gentleman out of Baton Rouge. His name is Eric Heber. And he's become very popular in the state. As you can see, I took a snapshot of his YouTube page. He has produced dozens of videos of places that you can go hiking in Louisiana. And as you can see, he has about 1.5 uh, well, actually 1,500 subscribers on YouTube. And one of the videos, and you'll see it's the fourth one down here, it's a long distance trail for Louisiana with a question mark. I saw that video a few months ago and it inspired me to reach out to him because he talked about in the video how we desperately need to have a long trail for the state of Louisiana. And there are a lot of people out there that are looking for things such as this. And you can see just on his Facebook page how he has well over 2,000 
followers on Facebook. So when I reached out to him, we had already started working on a plan for Acadiana. And that's how we got involved in all this, trying to develop a trail in our region. And as I continued to explore further, and after talking to Eric, it became quite obvious that we needed something for the entire state. So he's completely on board with this idea. He's actually a member of the Louisiana Hikers Association in Baton Rouge. And he's actually working on getting us to be able to address this exact project uh, to their club as well. And as I mentioned in the other slide, you know, a lot of people will even go hiking for several days to weeks at a time. If you go on YouTube and watch a lot of videos, there are people that will take several days to weeks off and they'll go hiking and they'll spend a lot of money in these communities. Uh, they'll take a break from hiking. They'll want to get a place to sleep, uh, gather up on additional supplies. So that's where that $6 million impact comes in on the communities. So this slide I'm showing you now is an example of why we need something that can go across the state. From the Lafayette area, if you want to be able to drive an hour and a half to two hours to get on a trail of, let's say, 10 miles or, or so, after the hurricanes that hit last fall, everything marked in red was shut down because of the hurricanes. Uh, Chico State Park, I might want to add, uh, is still closed right now off to their trail because they're housing people that have COVID-19. So the Chafalaya Levy Trail, which is the picture that I showed a little while ago, was really the only thing available for several months for someone just like myself to be able to go and walk for several hours. Now, things have started to open up, but we're still a long ways off. And so to give you a comparison of where we are compared to neighboring states, this is a picture of specific trails that fall into that 100 mile plus category that are in neighboring states in this region. You can see in Texas, they have the Lone Star Trail. You move over to Florida, they have a trail that starts south of Pensacola on the beach and goes all the way down to the Everglades. It's about a thousand miles in total length. And then when you go further north into Alabama, it goes from Alabama into Georgia and connects with the Appalachian Trail called the Pinoti Trail. And of course, most people have heard of the Appalachian Trail. It's really considered the mother of all trails in the United States, starting in northern Georgia and going through several states all the way up to Maine. And then when you cross over into Arkansas, they actually have two trails that fall in this category. The Wachita Trail is shared in eastern Oklahoma and the western portion of Arkansas. And then the Ozark Highlands Trail is in northern Arkansas. Missouri actually has an Ozark Trail, and they're working on connecting the two where eventually it's going to be one trail that's going to be in excess of 700 miles starting just south of Fayetteville, Arkansas, and it's going to work its way all the way to St. Louis, Missouri. So the idea is, is for us to create the Bayou State Trail. As you can see, and I'll show a little bit more up close what it will look like here in the next slide. But we would like to see a trail develop from New Orleans through the Baton Rouge area, the Acadiana area, all the way up through central and north Louisiana up to the Shreveport Bossier area. This would give us an opportunity to get some of these hikers during this time of the year that like to hike for several days and weeks at a time to have an opportunity to experience the Bayou State along with some of the other states that they like to be able to go to plan their hikes as well. So to give you an idea of how something like this can develop rather quickly, everything that you see in yellow are existing trails across the state. So if you're looking from the southeast part from New Orleans, working your way back up towards North Louisiana, the Mississippi River uh, has spots have been developed from New Orleans, starting at Audubon Park, all the way up to the Bonnie Carey Spillway, and just on the other side of the Bonnie Carey Spillway, going into St. John pa Parish. Now, Baton Rouge actually has a section that some of you might very well know uh, that starts in downtown Baton Rouge and works its way out of Baton Rouge back towards the Plaquemine Ferry. 
And so I'll talk more about that in a little while, but that could serve as a perfect spur trail that would connect the main route that we're proposing to be able to link directly into downtown Baton Rouge. And then further west is the Atchafalaya Levee Trail, which I've hiked, it basically goes from Henderson down past Franklin. And then working your way north, there's the Chico Park Loop Trail in Chico State Park, the Wild Azalea Trail just west of Alexandria. You go a little further north, headed towards the Natchitoches area, there's the Caroline Dorman Backbone Trails that's part of Kasachi Ranger District. And then on the other side of the Red River near Winfield, there's the Gum Springs Trail. And there is a trail called the Louisiana Trail that was established about five years ago. That's an old railroad that runs from Winfield all the way up just south of the I-20 corridor near Minden. And so everything in orange would be the connectors that we would have to develop to be able to connect all these existing trails to become one super trail that would be in length of over 400 miles. So the nice thing about it is, based upon all the research that we've conducted, much of this would require limited acquisition and or cooperation of private property. And the way that we would do this would be utilizing several natural connectors that are available. For one is the river levee system in your part of the state, uh, along with the Atchafalaya region, we could utilize the existing levees. It's already being done. As I mentioned a little while ago, there are different spots in the Baton Rouge area, in the New Orleans area, they're being utilized for trails. Also, the western Atchafalaya is already being utilized. And then there's also railroads both abandoned and even existing. Abandoned railroads are perfect. They're not being used. Most of the time they haven't been reclaimed yet for private property use. So it's easy to be able to just develop a trail on top of what was once a railroad. But the existing railroads work out well sometimes too. Actually the Rails to Trails program from Washington DC, they provide funding for different projects such as building trails on abandoned railroads and existing and they're actually working on developing a trail from Washington, D.C. all the way to Seattle. And a lot of it is using existing railroads. What they'll do is they'll place a walkway alongside one side of the railroad. Generally, they'll have fencing that coincides with the trail. And it just adds beautification to the railroad. It goes through a lot of these communities. So obviously, there's a lot of economic opportunity for these communities. And so... Most railroad companies are generally receptive to these types of projects. Also, you see these all the time when you're driving on the highway, the open pipelines, natural connectors to be able to use. It's already cleared out. It's still in the wide open space. And just like railroad companies, a lot of pipeline companies are generally open to the idea of having something like this because generally speaking, when they know that it's being used for trails, a lot of times they'll know that there'll be some maintenance involved to kind of help with their companies being able to upkeep those open pipelines. There's also gravel roads, which would be primarily more in the central and northern part of the state. Uh, and to be more specific in the Kasachi Ranger districts, those things are already developed. Not many cars drive on them. So they would be natural connectors to connect some of the existing trails in that area. And then only for limited stretches, we would need to use some spacing along some of the rural highways. And from what we've researched, it, again, it would be limited, but there would be a lot of space on each side where we're not able to use any other type of connector to continue the trail. So we're talking about a 400 plus mile trail. And yes, it's ideal that we can use all these connectors, but obviously, how do you make something like this a reality? And really we've done a lot of research and there's several different trail organizations out there, including Florida that's been researched. And one of the ways that you can develop something like this and be able to maintain a trail system, such as what we are proposing, is to break things down by regions or districts. So a lot of things would be decided upon and managed from a district level and even more so on a more local level with participating organizations that sponsor segments of the trails. 
But the idea would be to start, if we can develop basically along the path of this proposed Bayou State Trail, eight specific regions. And so your club, of course, would be in the greater Baton Rouge district. And this is an up close view of what the proposed route would look like. And again, all this, of course, is an idea stage. So we haven't gotten to a point yet for official approval on anything. But if all will go well, we would basically want to run the Baton Rouge district from the Bayou Sorrel area over to the western side right here, um, which would then flow back along Highway 75 towards Plaquemine. And technically, the trail would cross over from the Plaquemine Ferry. It'd be the safest route for people to be able to cross the river without having to uh, get into a vehicle to be able to cross from a bridge. But you can see what I have uh, as it flows south through the remainder of East Baton Rouge Parish and into Ascension Parish. And definitively, we would have the boundary, the eastern boundary of the greater Baton Rouge area as the Sunshine Bridge. What you see in yellow would be that levee trail that's already in existence. That I've done some research on that, and it looks like it's pretty much developed, uh, where they've actually even put asphalt on top of the levee. This would serve as an ideal spur connector that would bring people into Baton Rouge because when you think about these people that like to hike for several days to weeks at a time, they're going to want to take a break. They're going to want to go and maybe go into Baton Rouge and they're going to spend money. They will probably want to go stay at a place like La Berge, Hotel Casino. It would be perfect. Uh, a company like LaBerge would probably be a really good sponsor for the trail. Uh, and so there's a lot of opportunity for Baton Rouge and we wanted to get as close as possible to the Baton Rouge area. And so really what we're looking for would be clubs such as the Rotary Club of Baton Rouge that would be interested in sponsoring a segment of the trail. And so what would occur, and this is an up close personal view, is it would be decided later on, but we would want to find a club such as yours that would adopt maybe, you know, seven, 10 miles or so of the trail. And it would just be maintenance uh, in regards to making sure it stays clean, looking for potential upgrades, maybe adding benches along the way and other amenities that'd be ideal for hikers and bikers. And Really what we're looking for is to continue this process of reaching out, finding other organizations such as yours and other supporters that would wanna be able to develop the region and develop the plan to form what eventually be the Bayou State Trail Association. And the benefit from taking it from this approach includes some of these factors. It's creating a statewide effort for developing statewide trail and other projects. There are several small trails that you can find across the state. There have been some communities that have had a quite deal of success in regards to being able to get trails adopted, but there have been a lot of obstacles that some communities have not been able to overcome. So if you can have a wide association backing some of these projects, it can provide greater leverage and more purpose when seeking cooperation for approval and development. It obviously provides an identifiable and marketing mechanism for gaining support from the general public. And if we are having to talk to any private entities uh, or public uh, private property owners that may even have property adjacent to say a railroad, it helps with the support effort. It becomes a greater cause rather than just trying to get approval for say a five mile trail in a community. Now you're asking for approval for a five mile segment of a 400 plus mile trail. So it really changes the dynamic of the cause and the benefits of getting approval to develop this trail. It obviously provides a support system for local organizations uh, for development and improvement of these trail segments. They won't be left alone. Um, you know, going back to the slide I showed earlier when we had all these trails that shut down because of the hurricanes, imagine if the Bayou State Trail Association was already in effect, we could have gathered together, pooled our resources and gone out and helped those areas get those trails back up and running 
expeditiously. And it also provides additional credibility and leverage for grant approvals. There's several different types of grants out there. Rails to Trails program is one I just mentioned a little while ago. I firmly believe that if we're able to establish a solid rapport with the Rails to Trails program, coming from the proposed Bayou State Trail Association, I believe that we're able to get a lot more funding more consistently if it's from an association such as ours with the vision that we would have in mind. And also anytime we wanna have any type of private fundraising mechanisms, whether it be from the general public or from potential sponsors such as LaBerge that I mentioned a little while ago, it's definitely gonna provide a lot more um, that we can bring to the table for financing projects coming from a statewide association. So we're working on the proposed bylaws. We're looking at some of the other organizations that have things in place. But this is just a proposed structure of what the association would look like. It starts with the local clubs. They take ownership in adopting segments of the trails. And so we want them to be as self-sufficient as possible. And so they would work on trying to raise money themselves, maybe budgeting things through their organization for whatever they need to be able to facilitate maintenance and improvement on their segments that they adopted but they would be part of a district, like I just mentioned. So for instance, if the Rotary Club of Baton Rouge decided to become part of the Bayou State Trail Association, they would have a representative that would serve on the Greater Baton Rouge District Committee. That committee would then have a district chairman or director that would serve on the state board with the other chairman or directors from the other proposed seven districts. And of course, there will be some existing and special committees that will evolve from both the statewide and district level and also on the state level, just like any organization, we would have specific positions such as president and vice president and so forth. But the plan is, is to try to get as much support as possible over the next several months so that we can get enough representation to form this association, ratify the constitution and bylaws, and then from there, we would then elect and appoint the appropriate positions, and then we would start the process of reaching out to the appropriate entities for approval and development of the trail. And last but not least, why is this important and could be beneficial for Rotary? Well, as we all know, the environment has be now become a new area of focus for Rotary. This would be a terrific way to implement that area of focus here in Louisiana by encouraging and promoting outdoor recreation. It also provides a new objective that can help have a positive impact both socially and economically from the participating Rotary Clubs. It strengthens relationships with other leaders and organizations in the district. You know, we want to try to get as many Rotary Clubs involved in this project as possible, and that's why I've come forth to address to you today, and I'll be speaking to a lot of Rotary Clubs over the next several weeks, but there will need to be other organizations that will get involved. So it will only help in regards to working with other organizations on projects such as these and being able to work with some of the leaders in the various municipalities that would fall along the trail. And it does provide the greatest visibility for our clubs. District Governor Norman asked us last summer what we considered, you know, visibility, the most visible thing that we had to showcase Rotary in the Lafayette area. And we do have a boat landing uh, that was created about 25 years ago uh, that's called Rotary Point, but we really don't have anything else. Imagine if we had several clubs, uh, part of Rotary throughout the state, not to mention District 6200, that would adopt segments of this trail. We would have signage all along the trail showing each club that's adopting those segments that they're entering. And that's not to mention all the marketing that we would have available through websites, social media, et cetera. And of course, we're always looking to recruit members to our club and, and continue to develop the Rotaract and Interact programs. What better way to be able to do this than to be able to get young people involved. There will be older people that will be attracted to Rotary as well that love to hike. 
and ride their bicycles, but young people could physically get out there and help us develop these trails and maintain them. They're able to literally get their hands dirty and work on these things and be able to use the trails too. It's gonna give them an opportunity to take ownership. And so by developing that connection early through our Rotary Clubs, it's only going to provide potential opportunity for us to get new members in our clubs. So just to give you a quick synopsis of where we are on this, I presented this originally to District Governor Norman about three months ago, and she loved the idea. And she loved it so much that she wanted me to go ahead and present it to the next three district governors. So we went ahead and presented it to them and they love the idea, but they know that the only way something like this will work is if the clubs on an individual level decide that they want to get involved. So that's why I was so excited to be able to speak to you today about this. My club, of course, is very excited about it. I have several more I'm going to be addressing over the next a few months. And from my initial conversations uh, with the presidents, they seem to be very excited about it as well. And so really, we're looking for volunteers. Uh, this is my contact information, my phone number, and this is the email address I'm using uh, for communication purposes for the Bayou State Trail concept. But definitely, um, I appreciate you being able to speak to me today on this. And I am definitely uh, open to take any questions from any of you at this time. Brian, that was awesome. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Um, when my kids were younger in Boy Scouts, we would have been all over this this trail. Um, and, and, and so the, my first question is, have you reached out to the uh, local Boy Scout councils to see about their interest? We're, we're about to. Uh, what I wanted to do is, I really wanted to talk to Rotary first. As a fellow Rotarian, obviously, with the timing with COVID and such, uh, we thought it was best that we start pushing hard to help our Rotary clubs. But there's going to be a lot of auxiliary clubs that are going to want to get on board. And the Boy Scouts is definitely up there uh, at or near the top of the list of people that we're going to be contacting. Because, you know, some clubs like uh, this organization, obviously you have a lot of members. There's a lot of things you can do on your own. But we do not want to shy away any of the smaller clubs from being able to take part in this. So they might need assistance from some of these clubs, such as the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. So we'll definitely be contacting them very soon as well. Awesome. So we do have some questions. Um, first question is from Shelly Dupre. Are the trails generally safe? Who is responsible for maintaining and picking up litter along the trails? And she also noticed that there has been a spike in people joining the Mississippi Hiking Club Facebook page and the interest in hiking in North Mississippi last year. Okay, great question. Um, trails are very safe, Shelly. Actually, one of the things about hikers that people don't realize is that they're some of the nicest um, people and reserve people that you're going to find out there. Uh, that's why I showed myself as a, as a testimonial earlier. There are a lot of people out there just like myself that just want to get away from everything for a little while, enjoy nature, enjoy the peace and quiet, and really just stick to ourselves. Uh, a lot of trails, such as Appalachian, a lot of people walk those trails, and you know they're more of the same. But they also, if they see something suspicious, they'll contact someone. So you know, people look after each other on those trails. Um, in regards to trash pickup. That's something that I think is needed as part of the agreements that we're going to establish as we develop this trail. It's not just making sure when the summer ends that we go cut the grass and trim the limbs. We want it to look nice and pretty. So we want to be able to pick up trash throughout the year. And so these adopted clubs can do that. And, you know, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, you had talked uh, a little while ago about this upcoming effort to be able to pick up trash along the river. This kind of coincides with what we're looking to do as Rotarians in Louisiana and that it would all fit in because I'm not sure who's in charge of the maintenance right now on the levee trail in Baton Rouge, but that could be a really strong selling point if, let's say, hypothetically, the Rotary Club of Baton Rouge would want to adopt, say, that levee trail that comes from Baton Rouge headed towards Blackman. That could be a winning point that they may not be able to keep it up as much as, say, a sponsored organization. 
Um, but you notice the spike with the people following on Facebook. It is increasing very quickly. I have conversations almost on a daily basis with people that when COVID-19 started, we had to get outside to find things to do. And so really habits started forming very quickly and people started looking for these types of activities. And so I think it's only going to continue to escalate as we move forward. As Shelly did uh, pop in a quick follow-up, is there cell service along most of the trails in case someone needs medical assistance or to report something suspicious? Most of them are so when you get into the state parks. Now, cell phone service itself, I can tell you, it's spotty in certain areas, but most of the time you should have strong coverage. I think that once we're able to establish a trail system such as this, and by the way, I meant to mention this earlier, we're not just looking for just one trail. We want to make this the main trail, but we want to include other parts of the state to develop uh, spur trails that can connect to the main trail. But we would eventually continue the evolution of this where we'll develop a website, we'll develop an app, and once we get to that app level, we'll have different forms of communication that's going to be centered more towards that active hiker that's on the trail or someone that's on the bicycle. So that way they won't feel like they're being, you know, left out without being able to have some kind of immediate assistance. So Jeff Zimmerman wants to know, um, often large sections of the river levee system are restricted to authorized personnel only for um, facility and plant security reasons by the levee boards. Is there something we can do to minimize these restrictions to help facilitate the trail? Well, great question. Actually, um, after researching, of course, there are several different levy boards. And one of the things that uh, we're going to have to do to overcome is to show that it has been working in other levy districts, such as the Atchafalaya, uh, along the Mississippi River, particularly in New Orleans area. And, you know, I think that really what's going to come down to is going back to what I mentioned in one of the last slides about generating additional support. One of the key uh, individuals that we plan on approaching fairly soon is going to be Lieutenant Governor. Uh, obviously, it falls into tourism. I actually had a conversation a couple of days ago uh, with an individual that works for Lieutenant Governor's office in regards to grants uh, that are available for trails. I think if we can just gain support from that level, I'm not so sure if there's going to need to be any specific legislation that'll need to be passed to minimize these restrictions. I think it's just going to be more along the lines of being able just to achieve approval with some of these levy boards. That that'd be great. I, I and I I could see where the lieutenant governor's office would just fall all over this and be really excited about the op opportunity. Definitely. So uh, another question I had. I, I noticed you didn't have like the Tammany trace included in, in as that could be the start point that would lead over towards the New Orleans area going around the punch train, basically. Is there any thought about that? Actually, someone else had brought it up the other day. Um, it, it hasn't been ignored. I, I really wanted to try to focus at least initially on the New Orleans to Shreveport concept, because that's really exciting when a lot of people hear that. However, when you look at something successful like the Tammany Trace, they've obviously had a lot of success on their own. However, who's to say they may not be looking for expansion? You know, we haven't talked to them yet, but if let's say they would want to expand further towards Baton Rouge across the other Florida parishes, it could very well be a win for them to where if they want to somehow get involved with this proposed statewide trail association, that might be less uh, funding that they might need to be able to generate on their own. And, Maybe they want to expand the trail. They would want to have other organizations get involved for adoption to be able to maintain it. So, you know, what I'm showing today is just really, I like to call it that main artery, that the spine, if you will, of what we feel will eventually grow across the state because the North Shore probably will want to get involved in this later on. It'll help promote the Tammany Trace even more along with other places such as Lake Charles area, home in, in Monroe, I'm sure eventually those metro areas will probably want to get involved as well in finding something that would join uh, over to the proposed trail. But really, I personally think that starting in New Orleans would be a, a 
something that people will look forward to. A lot of people will fly into New Orleans. When you go and you look at videos on YouTube with people that will say, for instance, the Pacific Crest Trail starts from the Mexican border, goes all the way to the Canadian border. And you always see these pictures of people standing at the Southern Terminus, taking a photo. And then when they finish celebrating at the Northern Terminus, I envision a lot of people that may want to, may, they may want to go from North to South and South to North, but taking that picture right outside of Audubon Park in New Orleans, where it would start. And the proposed route that we'd like to see would be on the banks of the Red River in Shreveport, where they have a lot, it's a, it's a pavilion out there. And so it's perfect to take photos, those symbolic moments. And so that's why we really wanted to push to start with, with New Orleans to Shreveport, but definitely we're looking to get other parts of the state included as well. So one, one other question I have, I, certainly with the issue like the Atchafalaya down in Morgan City, or, you know, how are you going to, you know, where were you crossing the Atchafalaya with the trail and other bridges along that you're going to have to uh, work around? Where, where were some of those uh, hurdles? Okay, well, um, I do have some comprehensive PowerPoint presentations with videos included in the presentations that I can share with you by district. And for the Morgan City area, uh, you know, it's funny, I was trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to cross the Atchafalaya River? Well, come to find out, and thank goodness for Google Earth, I was able to look carefully at the old bridge, the Highway 182 bridge. If you look at it, very familiar yeah, with it. So you're familiar with it. Yes. They actually have steps to they go do. up to the bridge in a walkway. I have so, walked over the bridge. Perfect. So thank goodness there are things like that. There's going to be some challenges, of course. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the part of the West Chafalaya Levy, there's a, a set of water locks right at the end of it when you get close to the Calumet. Well, there's always ways of getting around that. One idea uh, that's been thrown around that we were looking at for Lafayette, for a trail in Lafayette, was an old boxcar. If you can just get a boxcar over by Utesh, it's not very wide right there. Um, we're going to have to be a little improvisational with some of this. But I do think that by sticking to primarily the levee system, um, these railroads, the, the pipelines, we're not having to cut out into the woods as much. It's all there. It's just a matter of getting approval and connecting. And as the trail evolutionizes over the next years to decades, you know, things will change, but at least we'll be able to have it established and then we can work on alternate routes from there. And I, I certainly see where you're going to need some, some shade areas from time to time as well along the routes, but that's Absolutely. where you can put up your, your economic impacts. I, I think this is a great idea, and and uh, Brian can't thank you enough for spending some time with with our our club, and uh, look forward to hearing more about this as as the whole thing uh, progresses. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate being able to speak to you today. You bet. Have a great day. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's been our meeting for today. Uh, join us again next Wednesday here, uh, March seventeenth, about twelve fifteen, for our soon to be one of the last few virtual only meetings of the Rotary Club of Baton Rouge.